Good day, fellow investors. Welcome to Investing with Sven Karlin. And if you're looking for fundamental analysis based on a value investing perspective, this is the place to be. So please subscribe and click that notification bell to get more videos of stock analysis. In this video, we're going to discuss two very good investments, two very good stocks, interesting stocks, Sydney Airport and Auckland Airport. On my blog, on my blog, you probably know it, but I have been analyzing airport stocks, all the traded airports out there. So if you click on any airport stock that I have analyzed, you can find easily the link to all the airport stocks out there that are traded on a stock market, on a stock exchange, and that you can buy. We have done interesting analysis of the European airports, North American traded airports, mostly Mexican airports and I am um, still have to do these Asians but now we have Auckland and Sydney airport. Here on the blog I'll put the link in the description on the video you can read the investment thesis behind investing in airports which we'll use also in the discussion of Sydney airport and Auckland airport and you have also the list and you can see which airports fit better your portfolio. Don't forget also to subscribe to my newsletter to get the analysis directly into your inbox and check my free value investing course if you want to learn more about investing. Let's go on to the analysis. So we'll discuss the stock price overview, what's going on in relation to COVID, of course, the businesses, the fundamentals of both Oakland and Sydney Airport that a little bit more with Sydney, the dividends, the valuation, and then to come to an investment conclusion. And I really think you'll get a lot of value if you're interested in such investments from this video. Let's start with the stock prices. Airports have been privatized over the last 20 years. Since then, also Sydney Airport public. And you can see that investors alongside dividends did receive pretty good returns despite the COVID situation. But the current level is where the stock was trading just five years ago. And the big boom in returns has happened over the last 10 years up to prior to the unfortunate COVID situation. But we have to see now where we are now and what we can expect. At current levels, the 2019 dividend yield is a significant one of 6% and we have to see whether this can be sustained and whether the stock price can return to prior levels. Depends on a few factors that we will discuss, but all in all, also Sydney Airport and Auckland Airport also rebounding significantly since the COVID scare are good investments to consider for your portfolio. When it comes to airport business, it's not just planes. Of course, air traffic usually brings the largest revenue, but there is also retail, property revenues, of course, the very expensive parking that you pay when you bring someone or you pick up someone at the airport. And this is also similarly for Auckland and Sydney, this is their business. Of course, it's all related to traffic, more traffic, more retail, more transport, more everything. So that's important to understand. But the key is that these positions, the airport gives them a mode in the environment. If we look at long term traffic, and they once you build the airport, and if traffic grows, like in this case for for Sydney from around 12 million in 1990 over the last 30 years to more than 40 million then you know that also your profits should follow. Profits should increase if the situation returns to previous levels and if we hope that what has happened in China also happens in Australia, New Zealand, hopefully Europe and North America, South America then we can hope that over the next year, two years, three years, there will be a good recovery and the dividends that have been paid out are reinstated again. The International Air Transport Association forecasts a return to 
2019 levels only by 2024. However, if this is faster, the stock price will recover faster. If not, then also the stock price recovery will be longer. So this is the risk reward when it comes to investing in these stocks. If 2024 is the year when it comes back to 2019 levels, then a dividend yield of 6% in 2024 is nothing bad. The companies have been investing for growth. Uh, Sydney cannot build too much. So they are investing in, I don't know, new toilets, uh, expanding, uh, improving retail, etc. But Auckland is investing much more heavily for a smaller airport. The level of investment is much bigger and they are also planning to do a new northern runway and also investing, enlarging, using the land bank there, trying to take advantage as much as possible of their monopolistic situation. Capital expenditures for Sydney around 350 to 450 million Australian dollars per year. This has been scaled down, but when the situation normalizes and traffic growth resumes, it will li likely be reinstated. Also, Auckland has been spending almost the same as Sydney quad millions when it comes to growth. So really, really, they have been enjoying and spending a lot to cater for the growth that has been going on. What are they targeting? This is from Sydney. So they have really benefited from the economic boom in Asia, but they are also trying to cater more to India, which are untapped markets, hopefully connect also with Africa and South America. However, if we talk about Africa, growth, economic development, then Europe is likely to enjoy most of that growth as Sydney is a little bit far to fly from Africa. And this is are also where the most family and economic connections are made. So Europe also from tourism, are you going to Europe or to Sydney? So in my personal opinion, I prefer European airports. And it's something you can read more on my blog if you are interested. Nevertheless, if we talk about business, what are the business risks when it comes to these stocks? Auckland is mostly focused for growth on tourism. There is little regulation and the New Zealand air operator complained that they are charging too much. So that might also impact revenues. And if they make the high investments and there is low growth of tourism or the growth isn't as expected, that would lead into a low return on investment and can put pressure also on the stock. When it comes to Sydney, the government is going to build a new airport, Western Sydney, something like that, planned by 2026, but, but as politicians are going to build it, probably will be later, you never know. But something that is usually a moat when it comes to airports, that nobody can build a new airport next to you, is not the case with Sydney Airport. They plan 10 million people, that's 25%, 20% of Sydney's capacity. That's a significant thing to watch over the long term. Then Sydney has also a lot of debt and has actual negative equity, which we'll discuss more in the fundamentals and plus normal business commodity cycles that's very important for Australia might impact also the business and returns on capital. If we look at revenues, slow but steady growth in revenues, number one for Sydney Airport, that allowed for a double in dividends. I'm taking 2019 as a benchmark year because this shows what can happen when the situation normalize, normalizes. Until the situation normalizes, it's all about surviving. The number of shares has slowly been going up, mostly thanks to those distributions, but now goes up another 400 million here from 2.3 billion to 2.7 billion because of the equity issue. Given that Sydney Airport has a lot of debt, they have immediately issued shares and asked their shareholders to 
chip in okay the shares were cheaper than the stock price so you get your shares at discount but still equity raises are another risk that has diluted present shareholders as you had to pay more than what was the cumulative dividend over the last 10 years actual returns to shareholders have been zero however the free cash flows have been staggering in 2019 and if this continues then is not then we have nothing to worry about the debt levels oakland international airport much faster revenue growth and if you remember checking the fundamentals that's why also the airport is more expensive if the revenue continues growing as fast net income quintupled over the last 10 years which is very very good shares are pretty stable and they have also issued new shares so that's something to take into account also book value per share is positive unlike sydney airport that has negative book value per share because they are paying all the money out in dividends and when there is a crisis like this they have no money and they have to issue new shares balance sheet of auckland remains strong so their equity is 6.6 .6 billion and the debt is long-term borrowings 1.8 billion which is really really manageable should be manageable at least if they go on to more investments now where the situation is bad they might take on more debt but that should also be possible also sydney has been always saying in previous presentations that they have a great balance sheet strong balance sheet but as soon as there was some trouble they had to raise equity and dilute shareholders so that's not a strong balance sheet in my opinion in my view however both companies have been paying constantly growing dividends some have been taking more debt to do that some a little bit less debt but still both are focused on those dividends or distributions in order to cater for shareholders when it comes to valuation market caps the auckland airport is the most expensive but it also promises faster growth as we have seen growth going four times over the last 10 years if that growth continues at a faster rate based on tourism in asia going to new zealand then it is cheaper also there is less debt so less risk and therefore the owner's return based on the cash that the business can create to shareholders is lower than what's the case with sydney where we have more cash free cash to shareholders or owners earnings however you wish to call that but there is also more risk and there is also the new airport so see if you want a part of if you want to invest in australian or new zealand airports or you want to exposure to those economies then you have to see which one fits best your portfolio so if we go and discuss investment returns what to expect if i apply a general five percent yearly global air traffic growth rate that can be higher that can be lower but again it's an airport once it's built it increases net income which is key or free cash flows available once when the COVID situation passes and it will pass because all these things pass one day then if you look at returns for sydney and new zealand sydney has higher current cash flows returns compared to the market capitalization but has higher debt and has a low slower expected growth rate perhaps also because there is a new airport coming out and apart from off peak times slots cannot really take much more air or airports can take larger airports but not more so the growth might be slower than the average expected global however auckland is building a new runway can really grow five percent and more over the next 10 20 years perhaps and therefore the stock current return let's say the stock is more expensive because more growth is priced in and the conclusion is that it's likely to expect equal returns but both returns are pricing in 
growth ahead, and then something that may, is even more important in the current environment we live in, which are interest rates. And when it comes to investing, and especially such, let's say, stable businesses where you know what will be the dividend, especially in good times, if you go to the Reserve Bank of Australia, and now the dividend, and this will also tell us what will happen with the stock price. If the cash rate target is 0.25%, then any dividend of 2, 3, 4, 5% is an amazing result. So investors are going to see, especially when Sydney Airport reinstates the dividend, if interest rates stay like this, stay so low, are going to see a bargain because every dividend of 2% will be better or 1% will be better than the cash rate. However, if the cash rate or interest rates return to 5% or even higher in hotter economies, then people are going to say, whoa, whoa, 2%, 5% dividend, I need an 8% dividend for the risks, for the recessions, and that might push the stock down. So that's the risk reward when it comes to these investments. Similarly, in New Zealand also, now the interest rate is close to zero, but has been also much higher. And on these peripheric economies, then you have to really be careful on what happens also with the economy because this is what determines the value of the stock as interest it was clear that interest rates were going down the stock went fast up from six dollars to nine dollars fifty percent increase then we had the crisis but a big chunk of these returns is, yes, thanks to the growth, but also thanks to lower and lower interest rates. So be careful about that. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. Also check my blog. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.